What's going on guys and welcome to Tasty Tuesday on Tasty Loot Game. In case you don't know, Tasty Tuesday is a show where we talk about gaming news of the prior week. Uh, my name's Seth. I'm Josh. I'm Chevy. And I'm Chris. And a quick reminder, Plus Club is coming up this Friday, so make sure you play Num Num Galaxy and uh, Helldivers... Democracy, democracy, whatever. Democracy, democracy blah. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I never remember. Uh, make sure to play those back. games. Uh, we've played them all. We'll be talking about that extensively on Friday. Make sure to come and join the conversation. Uh, but we have five bits of news, so let's get into that. For our first bit of news, Bioware producers are asking people on Twitter if they are interested in a Dragon Age tactics game uh, in the same vein as XCOM or Fire Emblem. They uh, are doing a poll, and it looks like 49% of people say yes, 22% say no, and uh, yeah, um, a couple things on there. People have said they want them to just focus on RPGs um, and not tactics, but they clarified and said they would still be making RPGs, but they're curious about making a tactics game as well. Uh, what do you guys think about their approach in surveying people, and what do you think about a tactics game in the Dragon Age universe? Um, I think it's I think it's cool they're actually trying to get like the word out and feel it and you know so they don't just be like here's a tactics game and then everybody's like what the fuck is this and they hate it and then they're like you guys just don't fucking get it man you know like um, you I'm get really, it, man. yeah I'm just really glad that they're like trying to you know get like a lay of the land before they go they straight bulldoze into territory they're not really you know they don't really know right mm -hmm. um as for would I play it? Yeah, I would. I think I would. Uh, the Dragon Age universe is interesting enough that I think they can make a decent game. With tactics or not. I mean... So. Shall we? No, I think it'd be great. Um, I love tactical games. I think, like you said, they have a, a big enough uh, lore at this point that they could easily do it. Um, I also think that they have a big enough team that they could easily work on a tactics game and a Dragon Age Definitely. Game. It doesn't seem I mean, too much of a stretch to no. do that. Um, They're even surveying if People would want it on mobile or on PC slash console. So they're even being open-minded in that aspect right. of where people would want to play that. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, obviously, I'd prefer to play on PC and console myself. Me too. But Me too. Mm -hmm. No, I think, I think it's a cool idea. Um, I think Bioware is also a competent company. They have a couple like shortcomings, but like yeah. for the most part, they make quality products, and that's oh, it. They normally nail what so, they do. So. No, yeah, I think it's great. I um, totally want to see that. Chris? It's just a smart business tactic all around to get a feel for what people are actually wanting and mm -hmm. looking for. We're just taking the big risk of making a game like that. It's just a smarter business move altogether. Um, I would play it. I love tactic games like that, especially the RPG fantasy genre. Yeah. Well, I just like that they're surveying because obviously it makes sense. They're going to have to spend money on the game. They don't want to pay for a game to be made and, and not sell well. Right. But also I like that they're going out of their way to actually discuss it with people asking questions mm -hmm. uh, and clarify things. Um, I'm in the same boat. I, I would be totally... I've, I've liked most of the Dragon Age games, um, and I love tactics games. Uh, I'm a big fan of Fire Emblem as of recently. I know you're also playing that right now, and you're yeah. liking it, Chevy. Um, and I'm also playing XCOM too, which I'm really liking. So I would love more tactical games. So, if, if, if anything. But I think Dragon Age could totally do it. I mean, it's it's borderline almost there already. Right. So... Mm -hmm. um, so you guys would be interested in playing a tax game, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, buying sure. it. Me too. Uh, let's know in the comments below, guys. What do you think about uh, how they're handling this, and would you play a Dragon Age Tactics game? For a second bit of news, Microsoft has come out and said that they're taking their time on the HoloLens to avoid Kinect situation. What they mean by that is releasing something that's uh, underwhelming and people really don't use it too much. They said that uh, if a consumer bought the HoloLens today, they would have 12 things to do with it as of right now. For $3,000, they don't think that's fair, which is which is fair of them to say, I think. Yeah. Um, what do you guys think about uh, their approach on trying to avoid problems they've already seen with the Kinect? And um, yeah, does the longer uh, development cycle of it bother you? No, I, I think this is actually one of the smarter things Microsoft's done in a while. Um, not only do I think they need to make sure it's going to be a functioning product when they release it, but I think they also need to wait until they can get it at a price point that's more at a consumer level. Um, I know the 3000 is a developer kit price, though, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah uh, that's what I was thinking. I was like, man, $3,000 can't be the consumer price. That's fucking no. crazy. <laughs> they wouldn't sell any. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, my opinion is delays are always good. Um, especially if they're for a reason like that, where they think that the Duke product, Nukem? 
12 years, <laughs> not so much. There's, there's, there's a certain length you yeah, don't want to go. Yeah. I mean, you could totally tell the horse shit from the non-horse shit. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, if a game gets delayed once, that's cool. If a game gets delayed for 12 years, it's fucking horrible. Um, no, but I, I'm really glad they're, they have the fucking self... Uh, the sense of self and saying, uh, yeah, there's really not a whole lot to do with this yet, so why don't we just keep it back at the drawing board until we can figure some shit out? And like you said, being able to produce it at a more of a consumer cost yeah. than three grand. Yeah, um, We've discussed this before. There's no way they're going to sell that at a consumer level. It's mm-hmm. impossible if they couldn't yeah, do it. That's all. That's if all of us put in like 750 bucks. I'm not doing that. I ain't doing that either. Not for 12 fucking things You're putting to do. in my 700 for me. Um, but I am glad... <laughs> But I am glad that, uh, like I said, that they have the that sense of self. I'm glad that they are kind of like, yeah, we don't want to release this to the public yet because we want to avoid what we did with the Connect, um, which to me, in my opinion, is still garbage. Um, there's still nothing to really do with it unless I want to Zumba, but um, I don't want to do that. Um, um, real quick, Chris, I know that when we discussed. Uh, VR and augmented reality, you were probably the most excited for uh, the HoloLens. What do you think about this? I mean, that's awesome that they are concerned about the amount of stuff you can do with it, and they are putting the foresight into delaying it a little bit, but if they delay it too much, they're going to miss the gun on this one, I think. Especially with VR just popping out. Just right around the corner. Real soon. Yeah. So they have to get this fixed super quick, otherwise they're just... They're just going to be washed away, slipped under. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I I, I didn't think about that, because if they don't figure it the fuck out we're gonna have another kind of xbox kind of trying to catch exactly. up mm-hmm. kind of, which, kind of which would be bad for them yeah um and, it, and i almost feel like they're saying this now just in case they are slightly delayed mm-hmm. you know people are, are ready for it they're mm-hmm. like where the fuck is it right mm-hmm. um what, what do you think Shelby? about the same yeah i mean like i said earlier i mean as long as they make sure they're releasing a quality product and that they get it done at a consumer level. I mean, I'm I'm interested, but I am far more interested in Oculus and PSVR. So, Me too. absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, is anyone here? We've talked about it already, but is anyone here excited for the Hololens? I know Chris is. Sure. Mm-hmm. Refresh me. The the the, the Hololens is augmented it's reality. Augmented right? reality. So you're seeing a screen where you see everything in front of you. Yeah. But it's putting but you visuals can there. So it's a HUD. And you can. It also shit. does. 3D augmented reality, so you can play like Minecraft type games. Yeah, with the with your living room and shit. Yeah, like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I think it's really neat. Um, uh, the augmented reality, like there was a few things that kind of was out there for like a little while, but they kind of died. Because, There's a couple mobile games too, like yeah, it was, like, well, and the phones mm-hmm. do augmented reality. Yeah, this will be just, the next next this is like level the next thing. step of it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I mean, anytime there's new tech coming out I'm, I'm you know I want to play with it so I mean you know why not just put Pokemon Go on it <laughs> yeah no, we discussed that earlier that would, that would be a missed opportunity if they didn't yeah. mm-hmm. um, alright no I, I completely agree what do you guys think about the HoloLens uh, are you guys excited for it do you think the delay is going to hurt it or help it let us know in the comments below in our next bit of news uh, Hideo Kojima and his new studio um, is already planning on games that they want to uh, make but he has said that he wants to keep his team small after working in a team of about 200 people, he felt like communication uh, was kind of lacking and the methodology proved to be too difficult to kind of keep within you know the whole team. Um, he said, in order to create something that is really of quality, you need technology, but more than technology, you need people. He wants to be able to have a smaller team constantly so he can be hands-on with every single person and have direct communication with them so they're all on the same page. Mm-hmm. Um, First off, are we excited? Uh, I am about anything that he's making. Anything that he's um, making is usually really high class. Uh, also, what do you think about his approach to a smaller team versus a bigger team? I think it's a good idea. Um, it, to me, it's like a, a, a beehive kind of. If you get two hundred people, let's say, there's a lot just happening. But if I mean, if you have like a team of well, whatever he's going for, like let's say it's seventy five, he can tackle individual problems as they come along it's not like a fucking weird chain of command it's not fucking uh, uh you know the last guy on the line isn't like oh fuck we're working on this now when they stopped working on it days ago i mean it's... well this whole thing to me just screams that he's just burnt out from his last experience with konami yeah it sounds like he's trying to do everything that he, he opposite of what he was doing with the last mm-hmm. thing right um it, I, 
for the longest time, he's trying to get out of making Miller solid for a long time. Finally is. Teams were getting bigger and bigger. The budgets were going up and up. And I think he, it sounds like he's just trying to condense that and do more passion project mm-hmm. type stuff. Right. Which, of course, as a fan of him, I'm excited for. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think, Chris? There's a plus side and a downside to having a smaller team. That Yeah, you can get that more personal, direct like approach to your workers and what image you want to portray in your game, but at the same time, it's going to take longer to produce games, which you know can be good or bad. Um, I also worry about micromanaging syndrome that happens in smaller groups like this, where everything has to be exactly perfect, right to the image that he's looking for, which could result in even more delays or you know cancellations if people just can't get it done the way he wants it. Um, well, that's the thing that I was thinking of, too, is production, overall production. Mm-hmm. With less people, they're spread thin, depending mm-hmm. on how big the project is. So if they kept it small, I feel like they could benefit. But if they're trying to make AAA huge games, yeah. this <clears throat> could uh, hurt them, or they might just have to hire more people, mm-hmm. and it's just a good idea. So yeah. Or they might just work on the game for a long time. I mean, yeah. But you have to get a game out like three Kojima, years Because... He's a perfectionist fucking anyway, so I mean... Like, but that's what we know of him through Konami, so yeah. how much of that was him, how much was uh, of Konami? Obviously, they wanted of the game the to be pressure, rushed, but yeah. I feel like we're going to see something different from him in, in everything. Mm-hmm. I mean, he seems like a completely different dude right now. So Yeah, he's so chill, and he's like tweeting every day, and yeah. fucking... And he's got yeah. a YouTube channel and he doesn't shit. have the fucking yeah. Konami code up his ass all the time. <laughs> uh, any thoughts, Chevy? Um, I mean, not, not too much. I mean, you know, excited to see what he's he's going to be doing um i think the smaller team will probably work uh, really well for him i mean he is like you said a perfectionist and this mm-hmm. is going to be easier for him to micromanage um though i i don't think um that'll be a bad thing uh, except for maybe time and if it takes him three four years to make a game i mean that's completely fine as long as he makes a, a quality product which i don't i've not seen otherwise from even his his last pet project uh Besides PT, um, Zone of the Enders mm-hmm. is great, yeah. um, and that wasn't like this super triple A title. It was still a really fun game. It had a lot of uh, a personality to it, um, and in the same vein of, of him having that freedom and, and lightening up a bit. I mean, speaking of his Twitter, you see him like he won a Dice Award, um, which is funny. They made cracks at Konami the whole time, oh, of course, and then uh, it's an embarrassment. And everyone gave him a standing ovation, and like, it, it's just it's it's really neat to see him be free of that restraint. It'll be really cool to see what he makes. So definitely, mm-hmm. um, yeah. I uh, when I think when I think of what he's going to be making now with a smaller team, I keep going back to Zone of the Enders because that was a passion project. Yeah. He didn't make that to sell a shitload. Of course, you want to sell it, but he was making a game he really wanted to make. Well, he didn't have a lot of budget for that either. He didn't. Yeah. It's a shorter game, all stuff, but it was really fun, and I and I can't wait to see him kind of delve into a more creative side that uh, it's not Metal Gear Solid. It's as hard as that is for me to say. Well, I know he also said that he wants to make... He's still interested in making a horror game. Mm-hmm. He's still talking to Del Toro, and, and he's you can still totally talking... totally make a horror game on the smaller, to, uh, with the smaller group. What's that guy's name? Norman Reedus. Yeah. He recontacted both those guys recently. Oh, shrewd, so shrewd. he's he is interested in working with them still. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it'll be really interesting to see what happens. Mm-hmm. So though he did say that fucking Del Del Toro is the only person he wants to work with. Yeah. Or uh, like director wise. At least say. he's sticking to his guns with that because everybody goes to work with Del Toro and then shit gets canceled. That was the other way around. I thought Del Toro said he would never work with anyone other than Kojima. It was one or the other. Yeah. They're buddies. Yeah. Bromance. Uh. So yeah, what do you guys think about uh, anything that he's coming out with and uh, having a smaller production team? Let us know in the comments below. For next bit of news, uh, Dying Light's DLC has come out, the following, which uh, has a whole new area, a bunch of new items, uh, and vehicles. Uh, It's a huge update to the game. Um, I'm not sure how much it is, but I personally will be picking it up because I really like Dying Light and it's a whole new chunk of content. But apparently developer Techland uh, has said that they're not done supporting the game. They said they have new unannounced content being worked on for this year already, and they plan on supporting the game throughout this whole year. Uh, Have you guys played Dying Light? Did you like it? What do you think about the new content and how much it's adding, and what do you think about them supporting the game through the rest of the year on a game that's already been out for a year? Uh, We've played Dying Light together uh, quite a few times, actually. And I, I love it. 
Uh, I loved it from start to finish. It was very refreshing. Uh, it was a very refreshing kind of zombie game. Um, brutal, fucking brutal. But um, the the new kind of this to me is what an ex expansion. That's what comes to mind when I think of this. Is like an actual expansion. It's a whole new area. Lot new shit to do. There's new mechanics now uh, with the buggies and the customizing the uh, buggies. Um, and them just wanting to build more for the game is awesome. And I'm excited to see what they can do next. If they, you know, um, even in, let's say, another six or eight months, account, just another chunk of fucking con content, cool. I mean, like... Well, and they said they were really surprised on how well the game did. And that's one of the biggest reasons why they want to keep supporting it is because they didn't think they're going to sell as many as they did. Mm -hmm. And uh, so now if they realize they have a product people are really enjoying, people are still buying, uh, I guess there's a ultimate edition that comes with the following or whatever mm -hmm. and people are buying that now still mm -hmm. so uh that's one of the reasons why they want to keep putting content out mm -hmm. um so yeah uh what do you think chris i actually never played dying light i've watched a lot of footage on it but it looks interesting um <clears throat> as far as like extra content i think that's awesome i think that the company supporting it for another year is an awesome thing um, I'd like to see that happen more often, actually, where companies continue to support games throughout the year and provide extra content for them. And not just, like, little downloadable costumes, a extra map here, but, like, the extent of extra content, like you were saying, like an expansion. Mm -hmm. New exciting great. things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like what The Witcher 3 did. Yeah. Exactly, and that's what it reminds me of, too. It's an expansion. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Chevy? I also have not played it. Um, not really at my alley, but I, I did watch you play a little bit, and it, you know, it seemed pretty uh, cool, really neat... Um, parkour systems and uh, the one thing it does remind me of though is this is reminiscent of Borderlands 2 to me definitely uh, Borderlands 2 did well kept doing well and they went oh well let's just keep supporting it then the, the fans want more they want more mm -hmm. and, and it did nothing but favors for them they extended the support for like an extra year past what they were originally yeah. going to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's awesome. And it kind of culminated into their biggest expansion, the, the Tiny Tina's um, Dragon Keep mm -hmm. or whatever the fuck mm -hmm. it is. That's mm -hmm. that's like the best fucking ex the best one for that for for Borderlands Two. It was, pretty neat, it was yeah. fucking awesome. It was really imaginative. You can mm -hmm. tell they were really having fun with it. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, if they they do the same thing um, Gearbox did with with Borderlands and just keep supporting it with stuff that people actually want to, um, to have in the game without screwing up anything in the game. Yeah, I mean, it's nothing but good mm -hmm. at that point. So. As long as it's not fucking Bethesda House Builder Plus, which is always a fucking expansion for some reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fucking Skyrim had it. Fucking Fallout 4 is going to get it. Fucking stupid. What do you guys think? Did you play Dying Light? Did you like it? Are you interested in it? What do you think about them supporting a game for another year? Uh, as kind of a thank you to the people who bought the game. Let us know in the comments below. And for our last bit of news, uh, Ubisoft is wanting and speculating in saying that uh, The Division will be the biggest or one of the biggest new IP launches ever, uh, following Destiny being the biggest new IP launch ever, and Watch Dogs, surprisingly, being the second biggest one, because uh, the hype on that fucking mm -hmm. sold it. Yeah. Um, and then Assassin's Creed, so they already have two of the top three. Uh, they think that, uh, well, let me find the quote. Uh, because of its many attributes, RPG, shooter, massive online multiplayer, realistic setting, and a beautifully recreated New York, great open world playable in solo or in co-op, The Division can become one of the biggest launches ever for a new IP. So they're saying, essentially, that the game has a lot to offer, and they think that a lot of people are hyped for it, and they think it's going to be one of the biggest uh, new IPs. What do you guys think of that? It has a lot of... Uh characteristics that like destiny has it does have the fucking the the solo or co-op uh pve it does have the fucking pvp um i think it can i think it has the formula for a, a good launch and maybe you know a, st a steady stream of players but i don't think it's gonna be a fucking like the gnarliest fucking ip you don't think it's gonna make top three i don't think so what do you guys think um, from the little bit I saw you play video right here um, I liked it a lot um, me too bigger launch to Destiny though I don't know about that I everybody was talking about Destiny everybody and well, everyone was talking about Watch Dogs it's really funny too because people were talking about The Division a shitload and then it, the hype died down 
and the hype's coming back. So I feel like that speed bump, if they ever had a chance, I don't think it's there anymore. Yeah, I, don't but I personally do think they'll make top three. I think the hype is there still. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I know I'm interested. I know you're gonna get it. I already have it. You're like, I'm, I'm gonna have yeah. it. I'm gonna have it. Probably. Yeah. Will. So I mean, like, I think it's gonna do the same thing most social games do, and your buddy's playing it. You want to get in on that action early, so maybe. Chris, I don't really know what to say. Just not just, really your cup of tea. Well, really... I'm not much of a first-person shooter, unfortunately. But when playing like games like Warframe. Um, and like you were saying, joining friends in hub or games like that—that's that's all the reason I play games, social yeah. gaming. Um, the hype train. I mean, just be careful. Don't pull a watchdog on us. You know, deliver, please. Deliver. I'm already more convinced this is delivering over watchdogs because I didn't play watchdogs early. I bought it as a gamble and I was disappointed. This I've played. I bought it on accident, so I guess that's a gamble. But I played it and I really liked it, so it's already got that going for it. I'm not disappointed anyway. Just don't get too cocky. Yeah. Um, and don't don't destiny it. <laughs> don't destiny it. Just don't make a promising game that sucks. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, real quick though, do you think that it's going to be? Do you think it's going to sell well? Do you think the hype is enough that it's uh, so. that, I mean, that'll do it? Yeah. Uh, I think it'll be destiny. No. Yeah, I'm skeptical of that myself. Yeah, as far as hype goes, like even I was talking about Destiny. I never talked. Chevy about was fucking shooters. hyped for Destiny. Chevy doesn't get hyped for things. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I, I might. I might uh, recant my statement. You guys are making a lot I of points. Think, well, I think it might slow down there, beat, Hillary. I think it might beat uh, <laughs> politics. <laughs> Build I, I think it might beat Assassin's Creed. Okay. I, I think it might break the top three only very slowly. Assassin's Creed came out a while ago, too, so yeah. I, I'm yeah. surprised Assassin's Creed's still on there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But we don't really have a whole lot of new IPs, especially of that level. Yeah. And it's really, it's actually kind of a testament to Ubisoft and their confidence in making new IPs if most of the new IPs that have sold the most are on that list from them. Yeah. Right. And they're releasing another one. Well, and like you said, no one else is really doing it. And Destiny had a lot of advantages, though. It was a game made by Bungie. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Produced by Activision, who has all the money. Yeah. And they, can they advertise it, the living yeah. shit out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they did the, the the early alpha for everyone. And then the beta. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I just they just really nailed it on, on marketing. Um, I have not seen too much, though, in my... Def- that's not a good... Uh, example though because I have a lot of ad block stuff so I probably don't see it anyways. Yeah. And the division's being uh being advertised quite a bit right, right now. What numbers are they going on for the Assassin's Creed thing? Is that like the first one? As a new IP, yeah. As, as a new, new IP. IP. So as as it was released and how much it's sold. Back in fucking Xbox. Yeah, two thousand and whatever the hell it was. Yeah. Five or six. Yeah. Uh, and wishful thinking, I would. I, I don't know if it's gonna beat Watch Dogs, but I'd love it to. Yeah. I don't. I hate the Watch Dogs is even there. Yeah. I, do I too. get that why game. it's there because it was it was a fucking lie. Mm-hmm. Two of those games on the list are a fucking lie. Mm-hmm. Well, in it, in it, it Watch Watch Dogs defense, though, it was a new IP in a time where everything was sequels. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. No, they did take a risk with it. So. Yeah. And that's something. Um, I think we definitely I'm need getting a second one. So. Well, hopefully it's better. And Destiny too. We're gonna hopefully you don't chase down a fucking a third Destiny at some point too. Yeah. <laughs> what, Josh? Well, hopefully you don't have to chase down fucking dead dead mouse again. <laughs> that was dumb. You chase down dead mouse. Yeah, he's a hacker. He's like an elite hacker that fucks with you. And he's like in a club in his stupid rat helmet and it's fucking. Mouse. And you go chit and you have and you have to chase. Is that them. real? Don't defend him. And you have to and you have to fucking chase him down. And he drives a station wagon with fucking like uh, mouse graphics that are like lit up on the windows that are like on the fucking windows and shit. I'm like, this is the don't, dumbest shit. Don't judge that. I ever had poor consistency. Of that motherfucker. Game. That motherfucker could probably bur- barely work his way around a fucking like a microwave, other than <laughs> other than his music gear. Damn. So. I'm saying, okay. music production is a lot more technical than a Michael. <laughs> I'm, I'm, so the guys I'm like not. Well, apparently, <clears throat> I'm not. That was that, that was a dumb part of the game. Is that, that a was, real thing in the game? It is. I was irritated the whole fucking time. I don't remember that at all. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. It was like like later in the game. He's like the one of the main. I got like fifty percent of the game. Yeah. Was, he's like, like, like a hacker's fucking with you. 
Yeah. Just and, 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 and your guy's just like trying to like, and, and, he's, just, and he's just doing it because he's fucking, yeah, bad, fucking, bad. yeah, like he's trying to get the Gibson and fucking. <laughs> he's trying to get the Gibson. That's just a That's fucking. That's the old saying. Oh, God. Get the Gibson. Just trying to talk about it now pisses me off. You know, and, 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 and I know it's based off of, of, of Dead Mouse alone. And that makes me hate him more. And I don't even know why. Oh, it's it's why? not even his fault. He took a paycheck. Someone's like, hey, Josh, you want to be in a game? We'll pay you. Ugh. You fucking... Yeah, I people, would. People are going to hate you because you're in it? Yeah. <laughs> I, I hate you. At the, yeah. the idea of even that happening. I fucking hate him so much. What do you guys think about The Division? Uh, are you excited for it? Um, have you pre-ordered it? Have you played the beta? Let us know in the comments below. Do you also think that it will... Uh, beat any of the top three new IP records. Uh, let us know. But I think it's going to do it for this episode of Tasty Tuesday on uh, Tasty Loot Gaming. As always, thank you for watching. Uh, make sure to check us out on Tumblr, Twitter, Tasty Loot Gaming. Check us out on Twitch, Sleep Division. Uh, check out uh, the, the many episodes that we have. Uh, we have a lot of them. Uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the episode. And as always, my name's Seth. I'm Josh. I'm Chevy. And I'm Chris. And we'll see you guys later this week on uh, Bus Club. Plus club and continue. Until then, uh, take it easy, guys.